It's one of the most notorious days of racial violence in Jacksonville history. Axe Handle Saturday. As we remember the 63 year anniversary of that day, we're taking a step back in time. First Coast News is opening its archival vault. We're taking you back to August 27th of 1960 with two men who still wear the scars of that day. As in much of the South, racial tensions build up in Jacksonville during the year. And each side in the dispute over desegregation became more short tempered as the months went by. I got a scar in back of had from one. Alton Yates, 63 years later, his hair now gray, covers the spot where the handle of an axe was used to hit him in Jacksonville's downtown. Violence flared downtown. What we couldn't understand is why the police didn't stop these people. They knew they were coming. Yates recalls warnings whirling around town of the possibilities ahead that day. The morning of that demonstration, we had gotten word that there was a good possibility that we were going to be attacked, that the Klan was aware of the demonstration and that they were going to be there. He says the Ku Klux Klan existence and force was well known. Rallies filmed in 1960, a report from once WFGA TV, now First Coast News. Fiery crosses and Klansmen fully robed and hooded. Then the vice president of Jacksonville's NAACP Youth Council, Yates remembers seeing a pickup truck parked at what was Hemming Park before the mayhem ensued. And we saw all of these men rushing to this truck and someone on the back of the truck distributing wheat from where we were. We didn't know at that time that they were axe handles, baseball bats, and that sort of thing. Fair aside, the youth demonstration went on as planned. And as Yates sat at the segregated Woolworth lunch counter on the corner of Main and Forsyth Streets, a young Nathaniel Glover was also downtown that day working at Morrison's cafeteria when he stepped outside. And they quickly surrounded me with those axe handles. And they were actually hitting me with the axe handles, calling me names. The weapons now describe this dreadful day in Duval. The blood that stained the city streets changed lives. And I ran, and I was so afraid, terrified. But I made a vow then, I will never not do something that I should do because of fear. And that shaped my life, gave me the courage to run for sheriff. Glover would go on to make history in 1995, becoming the first black sheriff in the state of Florida since Reconstruction. It took us years to move from total segregation to integration. It took us years to accomplish that. Now retired United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Yates served Jacksonville under several mayoral administrations, helping to shape the city that helped shape him. And almost overnight, it seems as though we are trying to erase all of the progress that we've made. Yates is now concerned about the path he's helped pave being chipped away. Nathaniel Glover recently released his memoir, Striving for Justice, the story of a historic black sheriff's journey in the Deep South. Proceeds from book sales will go to the Where, the Where They Will Shine College Scholarship Fund. And more details are available right now on the story on our website at firstcoastnews.com and of course the First Coast News app.